It's time to talk sports. Now from the fan studios in Melbourne, it's the Mark Moses Show on Sports Radio 1560 The Fan. You can be a part of the conversation at 321-984-1234. Now here's your host, Mark Moses. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome indeed to our number two of the Mark Moses Show. Yes, right here on 1560 The Fan. And I am very excited to get this fine gentleman on. He is the current general manager of your Orlando Magic. And we got much to discuss. His name is John Hammond. John, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks so much. Hey, appreciate coming on. I won't lie. Last night on Disney Plus, I was watching the Giannis movie Rise. And it appears the fictional version of you showed up on the screen. Do you know this is happening right now (laughs) for people to watch? Yeah, I've had I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I need to do that, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me and and, and tell me about it. How proud are you that you're involved with that with the story of Giannis? I got to start there. <laughs> it, it's fun. It's fun, you know, um to be a uh, with the I say the movie was fun and and to be associated with Giannis and where he's at this point in his career um I'm 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 proud of that and I'm and I'm so happy for him. You know, he's a he's a great guy and a uh and his, his the significance of his family, what that means to him and and um you know, couldn't happen to a better guy and he's turned out to be one of the best players in the world. It's really awesome, man. It's cool. It's like your name's on the screen, they show you talk. All right, I won't ruin it. I know you <laughs> you haven't seen the movie. You'll be good. You lived it. Let's go You're to the killing me, Mark. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the magic. You took Paulo Ben Caro number one overall last Thursday night. Why did you guys pick Paulo out of Duke University? Well, you know, um I, I just truly believe that he's got a chance to be a, 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 a very, very good player in this league. You know, Mark, it's going to come down to uh, how badly he wants it. You know, does he want to become great? Because, you know, the, what you want to do is, is, is draft someone that has the tools and the opportunity to be that. And he has those kind of tools. So uh, we just hope there's that burning desire d- – burning desire inside of him to uh, to want to be great because if 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 that's the case he has a chance to be was this did this start a month ago when you won the draft lottery or has this decision been made for months now with scouting and evaluation like take us behind the scenes when you came to this conclusion oh no this 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 you know as as we're going through the season you don't know exactly where you're going to end up you know every team starts the year and thinks hey if we can stay healthy and catch some breaks, maybe we can be, be competitive. Maybe we can, you know, slide, you know, slide into the playoffs. Maybe have a a, 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 a a kind of a surprising season according to NBA standards. But you know, that didn't happen for us. We did have a lot of injuries and played itself out, and we end up in the lottery, and then we get the good fortune of having the number one pick, which was a, I think, a real good uh, pick me up for for you know a lot of people in within our organization. I think some of our fan support and. And from a media standpoint, it was it, it was a really positive thing. So, you know, as as we're going through the season, we're constantly um, ranking players, ranking college players, ranking international players, trying to I don't want to say tier them that early, but you know, have some kind of a, of, of overall rankings. And look, in this draft, there was a a top three. Not saying that you know the fourth pick or the eighth pick or the fifteenth pick could not turn out to be the best player yet in this draft. Time will tell, but. You know, in this draft, there was a top three as the season progressed. And, you know, Powell was one of those guys, and for a large part of the year, at the top of that list. So, um, I think probably coming into this year, at the top of that this, this list. So, um, you know, we made the, I think we were very, very thorough on our decision, and, and, and hopefully we drafted the be- very best player in this draft. John, what did you like about Ben Carroll's game when you'd watch him at Duke? Uh, you know, just the the... the, the the part that you can see for your own eyes that, that, you know, any of us could walk in there and walk, look at him and say, my gosh, this guy is a freshman, uh, and he's 6'10, 250, massive guy. But along with that, he's got very good skills. And Mark, probably his, his, I think maybe his greatest skill might be his passing, has great vision with the basketball. Um, you know, you don't want to say point guard vision, but has, has the ability to, 
ability to make players better on the floor when he's out there. So I think the more kind of players you can put on the floor that make each other better, the better your the better chance uh, your team has to be a very successful team. You know, your colleague Jeff Weltman, you know, he said this after you guys drafted him where they really liked he played at Duke, final year of Coach K season, all this pressure, big games, going to the Final Four. Do you feel that also counted as well? You like that from this 18, 19-year-old? Yeah, you talk about like all the factors that make him NBA ready. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one right there, Mark. The fact that you know, look what look at the pressure he played under. I can't imagine those young guys in that program playing for Coach K in the season in that last season, and you know the media uh, uh, behind that and all the things they had to face and the pressure of trying to win. Can you imagine? to win the last game for Coach K. I mean, that had to be uh, remarkable, remarkable for those guys to go through it. So I think those things have just kind of made them even more NBA ready. We're here with Orlando Magic General Manager John Hammond. Appreciate coming on. You know, as a GM, you evaluate talent. And I ask this to reporters all the time, like, where would he fit in? Is he a three? Is he a four? A five? How do you evaluate him in today's NBA then? Yeah, I think I think you, you pencil him in because, you know, we like – we like one of the forwards we have in last year's draft in Franz Wagner. I think Franz is a three, but almost at six foot ten, he can he can he could play some power forward position. So uh, you look at Paolo and say if you slotted him in at the other forward position at six ten, we have two forwards with very good size, but mm-hmm. two forwards that 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 can do some things that can handle the ball, that can pass the ball. I think Paolo's going to be able to shoot the ball like Franz, and then you know you could put Wendell Carter inside. Uh, at you know six ten six eleven, it just gives us um nice size. I think nice athleticism, a, a good overall skill set, and all very very young guys that we can hopefully build move forward with. You know, we go back to Giannis. He's drafted in twenty thirteen. It took him a couple years to develop and, and you know understand his game. Do you do that with rookies as well? Especially Paulo, number one overall, high expectations. But it's like, hey. It's going to take him a minute to figure this out. Do you look that when you see a guy like Paolo Bencaro? Well, I think with Giannis, it was all, it was all his, in particular, his his, his physical side. Mm-hmm. You know, he came in extremely, extremely uh, thin, and now he's one of the strongest players in the NBA, which is a credit to him and his work ethic. But Paolo's different in that regard. Um, you know, physically, he's ready to play. So when we talk about a ready NBA player, we talk about the you know the things he went through at Duke, which make him ready, and we talk about the fact that physically he's ready. But as far as the overall game, that's a great point, Mark. It, you know, there is a transition period, so it's going to take a little time for Paolo to get comfortable, to get um, used to uh, the speed of the game, the amount of games we're playing, all those other factors. You know, there's just uh, the nuances of just like learning this game on both sides of the floor, understanding defensively who you're guarding, who this guy is, understanding team concepts of your defense, and offensively kind of understanding, like I talked about, maybe the speed of the game yeah. and, and decisions that have to be made. I wanted to ask you also, you know, you look at the Golden State Warriors. They won their fourth title. They have Steph. They have Clay. They love to shoot the three. Is that the current state of the NBA in the style of play where everyone better be shooting that three-pointer? I mean, what's your take? Yeah, I think it is right now. Right now, the three-point shot is such a major factor in the game. Um, and, you know, the thing is, like, everybody shoots it. If, 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 you, if you're not a stretch um, player, it doesn't matter if that would be a guard or now they're talking about these stretch bigs. I mean, it's difficult to kind of be one of those guys, one of those special players in the league if you can't stretch the floor. Not that you, not that you have to. You look at a guy like Demar Derozan, who plays for Chicago now, mm. and and an All Star and one, and recognizes one of the best players in the NBA. And for the most part, he's a mid range game player. You know, we have a guy on our roster, a guy like Markel Fultz, who I think at the end of the day is still kind of going to be his his true strength. Strength is that he's a mid range game, mid mid range game player. So guys can do that. But in today's game, the more the merrier. The more guys that you can have a stretch. That you can stretch the floor with, the better it is because the three point shot is such a major factor. What do you like about Caleb Houston that you took out of Michigan in the second round? We just, you just talked about it shooting, you know, so three point shooting. You look at a guy like Caleb and say, you know, your hope for a guy like that is can he be a, a, somewhat of a three and D guy? Could he, could he find a way to defend in this league? Uh, he's a very smart player on both ends of the floor. 
Um, so I think, you know, can he, can he figure out the nuances of, 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 of the NBA defense, um, have the quick, quick enough feet to be able to keep people in front of him, contest shots, and then offensively spot himself in that three point, in that, in that, in that corner three and, and shoot that ball consistently. He, he when I talk about him, you know, he, he has an understanding for the game. He's one of those guys. He understands like what to do and what not to do. Right now, what he, what he, what he does best get to that corner, spot up, wait for that ball to be swung for him, and make that three. We're here with General Manager John Hammond with the Orlando Magic. Appreciate coming on. A couple more for you. Uh, going back to two players you talked about, Jalen Suggs and Franz Wagner. What did you think of both of their their first seasons in the NBA? We could start with Jalen if you want. Well, you know, Jalen, he, he didn't play enough. Hmm. You know, the injury set him back, and, and – um, uh, that was difficult, but I will say this. You know, I think he played 42, 43 games, almost missed half the season. But, Mark, when he played, he was really good, and particularly defensively. You know, he's got um, good size, good strength, uh, good feet. He's tough So uh, and, and um, great instincts defensively. So um, has a chance to be a very, very good defensive player. Offensively, there's one of those guys, Mark, you just talked about, about making the move from college to the pros. And you look, the guys, one year, just like Paolo, one year in, in, in college, and you're trying to make this transition from high school to college. Two years later, you're, you're playing in the NBA. So I think uh, a guy like Jalen ha- has had a year under his belt now. He's going to be even better offensively. But he has a chance to be a good player. We need him. We need him to be a good player for, as we're moving forward. And Franz, you know, like the guy was – you know, you, you, it, here, here's we look at it like this way. If we, if we say we look at a guy like Franz Wagner this past year and say he's even better than we thought, and you know what? If if, if we're saying that about Wendell Carter as we move forward, if we're saying that about Paulo Bancaro as we're moving forward, if we're saying about Jalen Suggs, he's even better. He's even better. When you have guys, when you start talking about numerous guys like that in your team, pretty soon you're going to say, "Well, our team's even better than we thought." So guys have to play even above. What do you think their their potential is? And so you say, well, what about a guy like Paolo, number one pick? Well, you know what? That means he needs to be an all-star. You hope. Fingers crossed that he could do something like that. On top of that, where does Cole Anthony fit in this team then? Another guy. He's going to be another guy, as you say. And you know why I don't mention his name? I could, should mention his name and say he's another guy. That Cole has got to continue to work, make uh, 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 adjust to playing in the NBA. Cole, look. You know, one thing, people have value that can score the ball. Cole Anthony can score. And so, you know, he, he's had some injury issues along. Another player has had that concern. Get himself healthy. Another reason he cannot be a very, very good player um, um, in this league and be a long-term player for us. Like the guy, you know, he's, he's a, a hard, hard, hard worker, and, and he wants to be good. He wants to be great. So hopefully that can all work for him. What are the expectations for you then for next season for this ball club? To be a team night in and night out. And this is, you know, and look, a lot of it, Mark, was because of the injury woes to a certain extent. We knew, we knew going in what, what potentially this was going to be for us. We, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough year, but we thought we, maybe we could overachieve. We weren't capable of overachieving um, because of, because of injuries in particular. But look, we, Expectations would be we need Markel Fultz to play 70, 75 five games at least. We need uh, Jalen Suggs to do the same. We need to stay healthy. We stay healthy. There's no reason we can't be competitive night in and night out and be a team that at the end of the season that you would say about us, you would say, hey, look at their lower land of magic. They're even better than we thought, better than I thought, and they overachieved this year. So that's the that's the hope and expectations and wherever that takes us, I don't know where that's going to take us. I don't know how many wins that's going to get us, but just to be one of those teams, every night we take the floor that we have a chance to win, and the other team in that locker room is saying, "Hey, we got to be ready to go because these guys could beat us tonight." What did you take out of Coach Mosley then after one year, his first year ever as head basketball coach, and then as he goes into year two? Yeah, you know, uh, just a, a great connector, a great connector, a guy that um, I think has. The ability to communicate with players, I think that he has a good understanding of the game and how he wants the game to be played in his eyes. And, um, you know, there's no reason he cannot be a very good coach in this league. And who knows, maybe he could be a great coach. You know how it goes. Usually 
Hmm. Uh, good coaches have good players, and great coaches have great players. So our responsibility is to make him a good coach. Our responsibility is really to make him a great coach. Okay, I know I'm going rapid fire with you. I want to go back to the draft lottery. When you see the Magic at the first pick, did you fist pump? Did you high five? <laughs> what happened behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, Jeff and I were sitting there. You know, Jamal was on the stage, and Jeff and I were sitting in the audience. And, uh, yeah, I think, we, you know, we just gave each other a uh, – I don't know what we did. I don't think we hugged, but I think we gave each other like maybe a double fist bump or something. It was it was a great great time for us. Well, as the general manager, how hard is it to get the first pick in the draft? It's not hard if you got luck on your side. <laughs> I love it. So okay, so now where do we go? We go look towards you know summer league. What's the next move? Yeah, next thing for us is we you know we're we're kind of trying to. Um, Put our roster together um, and and some, somewhat complete our roster. Maybe not in, in in full completion, but we're working on that right now. And then right behind that, in a matter of a few days, here we're going to have a we're going to have a mini camp here in Orlando. And then that we'll, we'll, our summer with our summer league team, we'll take that summer league team. We'll fly we'll fly to Las Vegas, and then we'll play the uh, NBA summer league. And uh, and then from that point on, we'll you know we'll break there. And then uh, you know, hey guys, guys are in the gym. Guys are in the gym. So now, nowadays, guys are basically in the gym all year. They're going to take little windows of breaks here or there, but it's a big business, tough business, and guys know they have to work basically year-round to compete and keep a job. I hope you understand. You you and maybe five other people knew that Ben Carroll was the first pick. The whole other universe had no idea. You know this, right, John? Yeah, yeah you know, um, <laughs> and the only reason why is because, you know, I, you, you talk about a guy like Jeff Weltman, and, Jeff's really, really thorough, mm. and 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 he's gonna. We're we're gonna talk it over. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it again and again and again. And um, um, so, look, you talk about like you know when that decision was made. It was made. Uh, it was made. You know, late in the process. But you know, we gathered all the information we needed. And uh, once we had all the information we needed, we eventually said, "Hey, th- that's the right guy for us." That's really cool, man. All right, before I let you go, and I appreciate coming on, we're here with Orlando Magic General Manager John Hammond. There's a buzz in the air here in Central Florida. Once they got the number one pick at that draft lottery, Magic fans are excited. They're excited. Do you feel that as well when you walk around? Like, I I feel this buzz. Do you feel it? Yeah, yeah, there is. There is no question whatsoever. That's that's why I said, you know, when we got it, when we won that lottery, when we got Mm -hmm. that number one pick, that was that kind of kickstarted everything. We felt that way, and so um, you know we 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 hope that that as I said, I hope that we can just uh, put a very good competitive team on the floor and a team that like plays hard every night. If we play hard every night and as I said, stay healthy, we'll find a way to have good things happening. And then there's no reason this thing can't grow and continue to grow with these young players, and we'll keep adding to it as we move forward. Do you get a vacation anytime this summer to chill out? If, if there's a quiet time, if there's a quiet time uh, in in the um, uh, NBA calendar, it's usually August. You know, we kind of take June, we have drafts and things like that, and then we carry that July right into summer league and kind of complete our roster in July. And then if there is, if there is like a, a little window of quiet time, it's usually it's usually in August. Do you say like, all right, no one talk basketball with me. I'm taking a week off. Is that what happens? No, nah, you know, it's kind of it's kind of who we are you know it's 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 not our it's not our total identity that's for sure but it is who we are and and you know hey man love it i mean i always uh you know you you talk that theory of uh you know this isn't a got to job this is a get to job you know we get we get to do this and so lucky to be able to do something like this so never never ever get tired of it that is awesome john hammond general manager of the orlando magic thank you so much for coming on this is awesome for me because we talk magic nonstop on here have a great summer and i hope i can get you on again all right anytime love it mark thanks